Okay, I'm Steve Mason from Solwise, <coughs> excuse me, and what I'm going to do now is do a quick GUI video of the various setup screens and discuss the features of the IPCOM AP615. Now, the 615 is an outdoor 2.4 gig, 150 meg, 11N uh, device. Um, has two, uh, sorry, has one built-in 12 dB directional antenna and uh, Kazakh supports a lot of different functions, uh, some of them which I think are a little bit redundant nowadays, but it does have a lot of functionality. So let's go through the various functions for it. So it's on the default address 2.1, and we'll just do uh, login by default is admin admin. <coughs> and for some reason, it says the default country is India. I don't know why, but we'll change that to England and we'll click on login. Okay, so the first thing it does is it jumps to this quick setup screen and you can see all the different modes that it supports. It does support a lot of different modes. So AP is standard, it's just an out, out, outside broadcasting device for clients like phones and etc to connect to. Next thing, it's got station client. So with a station client, you could, for example, have this on the outside of a remote building so to connect to a site-wide 2.4 gig Wi-Fi network and trunk that through to wired devices inside the building. So that's what Station Client does. Universal Repeater means what it would actually do is connect to that uh, transmitted Wi-Fi signal and then repeat it out again. So you could think of that as some form of range extender. Um, I'm not a big fan of universal repeater, if I was to be honest, because every time you repeat, you half the throughput. The other issue you've got with this product, if you're using it as a repeater, is it has that semi-directional built antenna. So if that's aimed at where the signal's coming from, it's then going to repeat the signal straight back over the area where the signal's coming from. Seems a bit redundant to me. Universal repeater is probably more relevant when you have something which is uh, got an omni antenna or something like that. So it picks it up and then rebroadcast it locally. Uh, you've then got WISP mode. Now, WISP mode is very much like station client mode. So it's designed to pick up the outdoor Wi Fi and send it to a networked local connection inside as a LAN connection or wired network connection. The difference is that the connection between the inside and the incoming signal is actually a routed connection. So uh, that's very good to give an isolation. Uh, so if you want the uh, wired network inside to have an isolation from the outside or you want it to isolate from your network, having it as a router gives you the extra degree of isolation. You've then got a repeater mode, which is pretty similar to universal repeater mode, except it's a repeater mode specific to this actual product. You've got a point to point mode, which is like a bridging setup. So you can have uh, one or more units uh, bridging networks between them. And you've got it acting as a router. And what that means is the internet comes in via the wired connection on the bottom and then transmits out as, as Wi Fi. Uh, so we've got all these different modes. Uh, to be honest, uh, the main mode for it, most people are using it probably as, is either as an access point or uh, some people may want it as some form of station mode, either as a station client where there is no isolation between the wired devices inside and the network coming in, or in WIS mode where it's still acting as a client connecting to the outside world, but there is isolation between the inside devices and the outside devices by virtue of it being a router. So let's just quickly go through this sort of setup. So if I click on next, so this is going through the setup for an AP. It says, what do you want to do for the channel? We'll leave that on auto. What do you want to do for the security? Well, let's pick WPA. We'll leave one, two, three, four as the default password, but obviously you can change that. Click on next, click on save. That's it, it's done. It's not rocket science, it's a very quick piece of equipment to set up. So uh, this will be where you've got a LAN connection coming from inside with the network on it or the internet on it. 
and you want to broadcast it locally for, for example, outdoor clients to pick up on their phones in a courtyard or a garden area or something like that. So a typical example is you might be in a home setup and what you want to do is you want to be able to sit in the garden and connect to the internet. So what you do is you run a network cable from this device to the outside, sorry, from your network to this device sat outside, and then set it up as an access point to broadcast Wi-Fi out the area outside. Uh, so let's log in again. Okay, so as it says, current mode AP. So this is now set up and running as, as an AP. Uh, let's quickly go through these other, other settings on here. So obviously you've got the DHCP and static IP address settings for it, which you can change. It's on 2.1 by default, which I'm not gonna bother changing that. Um, you can use it as a DHCP server uh, that's mainly when you're using it as some form of router mode. Uh, normally you wouldn't have a DHCP server running it when it's already connected to an existing router because you end up with a DHCP clash, so you don't want to be doing that. Uh, DHCP clients, so that's just telling you any clients that are connected to it acting as a DHCP server. Uh, VLAN settings, so you can actually put a VLAN tag on the uh, traffic if you want. Let's go through the various wireless settings. So if we look at the wireless settings, um, country SSID, all this is fairly obvious. Um, you've got the um, security key, for example, uh, the channel. Transmit power by default is set to 8 dBm, and that's because it's got a 12 dB antenna on it. Uh, so 12 plus 8 makes 20, which is the EU maximum legal limit for 2.4. Uh, bandwidth, do you want it to use 20 meg wide channels, 40 meg wide channels, or auto? And do you want any form of isolation on it? What else we've got here? Let's go to the advanced settings. Advanced settings, uh, it's got, do you want to set the transmission range? Uh, as an access point, that can be difficult because you don't know where your clients are going to be with respect to where the outdoor access point is. If you're using it as a bridge, then sometimes setting the transmission range is a good thing to optimize the timeouts for traffic going over the link. So if you're doing a one kilometer link, um, it's probably a good idea to change that to one kilometer just to make sure the timeouts are optimized. Going further down, we have these little things here, urban or suburban. The purpose of those is to uh, try and do uh, some degree of filtering on interference noise. So you can actually do some filtering um, obviously it puts more filtering on if it's urban than if it's suburban just to try and cut down the interference for it that's something I've not seen on other 2.4 gig products to be honest the tunability for interference um, capabilities um, signal transmission do you want it to orient to optimize the signal transmission for maximum number of clients or maximum coverage uh, various things like WMM uh, and etc 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 and antenna polarization I don't know why quite why you'd want to change the antenna polarization so I'd leave that by default uh, so we won't worry about anything else on there what else we got on this screen access control list do you want to block or allow specific MAC addresses only um, if I go to advanced, you can set the speeds for the LAN ports, which you normally just leave those on um, automatic. Uh, network diagnose, usual size things. Do you want a site server, a ping or a trace route operation? Uh, network service, things like Wi-Fi scheduling. Do you want it to turn off at certain times of day or do regular reboots? So that's the uh, just gist of it. Um, so just as a quick thing, I'll just go through some of the other options here. Some of these won't work necessarily because we need to actually connect to something to make them work. But for example, if I go through a uh, WISP mode, which remember it has, that means it's a client, but with a routed internal wired network. So if I click on next for that one, and uh, just pick one of these networks. So what it's doing is saying, what do you want me to connect to on the outside world? 
So obviously this is something that you can only really set up on site. So because it actually wants to uh, test the networks and find which one you want it to connect to. Uh, click on next. Um, we're going to put some... Um, okay, I'll make up a, a Wi-Fi password for this network. Click on next. So it says for the WAN connection, do you want this to be by DHCP static or PPoE? DHCP is almost certainly the norm. So what that means is for the Wi-Fi, remember it's acting as a Wi-Fi client, the Wi-Fi client side wants to get its IP address automatically from the Wi-Fi that you are broadcasting to it. And it's saying, okay, what about the Wi-Fi password? For your local network. Um, so what do you want it to be? Uh, blah blah blah. We won't worry about that. We'll just leave that on the default settings. No need to worry about that. And it's saying for the LAN side of the setup, do you want it to be uh, what address range do you want it to use for the LAN side? Well, the default on the LAN side for this is the two networks. So let's leave that on two dot one. And we click on save. And now it's just rebooting. Mm -hmm. This is one of those products where each time you do a change, it wants to reboot. Say some of the, some of the products you can save all your changes up and do them all in one go, but it is quite good as a as a low cost two point four gig outdoor device. This so we've made some compromises, I suppose. And now we can do admin, admin. Okay. So now it says you're in WISP mode. So. Um, We've got all the different modes here. We could try another mode if you want. We could do point to point. Uh, it has got a lot of different modes, these. Um, do that. Yet again. So in point to point mode, you can tell it what you want to bridge to. Yet again, it does it by a process of scanning to look by networks. So this is scanned our local area. Just look at these. These are the 2.4 gig Wi-Fi networks that we can pick up actually in our office inside a metal building. So it's amazing how these Wi-Fi, there's so many network, Wi-Fi networks out there nowadays. Click on next. Click on next. Uh, so this is just saying what IP address you want to do. Obviously, make sure you've got an IP address which isn't going to clash with the network that you are now connecting to. And click on save. And yet again, we have to go through the uh, rebooting process. So some people are saying that this is useful as um, somebody who wants to, for example, um, send a network to another building, um, but doesn't want to go to the expense of additional bridging units and that sort of thing. Uh, my feeling is additional bridge bridging units would actually optimize your performance and give you the capability to use 5 gig for that bridge link, which reduce interference and yet again uh, optimize your performance a little bit better. I suppose if you're in an area where um, there is zero or very, very low amounts of 2.4 gig interference, if there is such an area in Britain, I don't know where that is, um, and you really wanted to actually cut the bill down and do it cheap, 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 then you could actually use this as a product, for example, on an outdoor shed or building to actually pick up Wi-Fi that you're broadcasting out from your main building and then... Um, route that in as a to wired devices inside so you could actually use it for that um, but you need to think about what performance you're expecting through that and uh, how many uh, 2.4 gig interfering networks you've got in the neighborhood if you've got a lot of 2.4 gig interference 
then I wouldn't do that. What I would do is actually have a separate 5 gig bridge link. Uh, still use this maybe for the local connectivity, still use this for covering, I don't know, yards or gardens or that sort of thing. But probably resort down to using proper 5 gig bridge units. Um, but I say, depends what the interference is like in your area. Um, so that's it. I mean, I could carry on going through all these different modes on here, but as you see, uh, there's no rocket sites in any any of the modes. Um, you could do re next repeater. Yet again, it's saying, what do you want to repeat from? So we could tell it what to repeat from. Click on next. And... Uh, do, 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 do. So... Uh, saying what's the password for the network you want to repeat from can we use that same password because it seems to be okay IP settings make sure they don't clash with anything else on the network and that's it so now it's going to pick up that network and rebroadcast it out again um, Usually, uh, the only problem is the rebroadcasting network will be at half the speed of the incoming network, because obviously what it has to do is it has to take the incoming network in, transmit it out. Incoming, out, that's two stages. So it will produce a performance de de uh, degradation on the traffic throughput. The other issue is, as, as I've already said, it's got semi-directional antennas put, being, uh, coming into it. So if you've got it aimed at where a Wi-Fi network is coming from, um, it will repeat it straight back over the same area that it's coming from. That's not really what you want a repeater to do. My feeling is what you want a repeater to do is pick it up, let's say, from a signal coming in from the left and rebroadcast it out to the, to the right-hand side. So it probably hasn't got the best antenna set up for, doing, for operating as a repeater like that. Um, anyway, that's it. That's the AP615. I hope that gives you some insights of what the screens look like. And uh, thank you very much.